So I did. Typo in the title. Did I typo the, the thumbnail too? No. Thumbnail is good. Title is bad. All right. Easy enough. <laughs> uh, where was I back to? Where'd that, go? Where'd, that go? where'd that go? No, no. There it is. Close that. Close that. Dan, what's up, man? How you doing? Good obsession. Hello, hello. We'll give a couple minutes for some folks to come in, and then we'll go ahead and get started here. All right, get the phones quieted down. Oh, I got a quick text here. Here, here. Here, Okay. An A net A8 plus. Yes, that's what this is. All right, so we got a bunch of people in here now. So, what we're doing tonight is I'm going to start part one of the big modification that I've kind of been pushing for a while, and this is Ultra Magnus. And this is a mod that both Brandon and Aaron worked heavily on, and I kind of helped a little bit here and there, but the two of them decided to go ahead and make this mod for the ANET A8 Plus, which is what I have right here. Uh, so because they were talking about it, I requested this from Banggood. They supplied it to me. I did a review of it. It's a fantastic machine out of the box for 180 bucks, 170 bucks. You can get it for nowadays. Um, it really is a huge build volume that you can do so much with. I really do like it in this configuration. The hot end is a little bit desired, but out of the box, you get a lot of functionality and a lot of print quality with it, which I like. But we're gonna forego all of that and we're gonna go ahead and modify the bejesus out of this thing with what we're calling Ultra Magnus. Now Ultra Magnus is going to be a bare direct drive hot end. We're gonna redo all of the mounts with 3D printed parts. It's gonna be all color coordinated per Ultra Magnus, which is red, white, and blue. It's a very patriotic transformer. I have a Prime shirt on, also very patriotic. But today is going to be mostly tear down. We're going to build some of the few, some of the parts to get them, you know, started to be uh, put in. So some of the mounts here. Uh, I am going to have to wait to do some of the feet on here because I did forget to cut down the extrusion for that. So that will be, if not tomorrow night, Monday night, we'll get to that part on there. Uh, Brand said I decided on what strain relief we're going to use on the bed. Um, I did not. Well, I did actually. I'm sorry. I did. So uh, that when we get to there, I'm actually going to be bed connects. Am I good? Yeah, I dipped there for a second. Uh, I'm going to be resoldering the bed connections and looping around, and we're going to be using a cable chain on the bed axis on the bed only because this won't need it because of the, the way the bear is designed. Uh, but I also did 3D print a part for that, so we will have a very nifty little solution underneath of this to route the bed cabling, so that's not going to be in the way, it's not going to kink, it'll be very, very uh, successful. So, uh, it will be very, very, uh, what was the, I don't want to say successful, um, I don't know, it'll take the abuse of a 3D printer. <laughs> uh, what do I use to cut my extrusion? I have a... Uh, Chop saw, miter saw, that I have a, a blade for a high TPI count blade that I use to cut my extrusion. Uh, so if there's any questions why I initially start the teardown of this, we can go ahead and... Um, yeah, Brent, actually it was Aaron that showed me what he did on one of his, and then I found it actually online um, once I had the idea. So this is 1015 chain, so it's 10 millimeters tall, 
15 millimeters wide. It's a little bigger than what I needed, but uh, I figured it does it runs nice and flat. Uh, it does not, once you do it, the sag on this is almost nothing. So once this gets hooked on and it is moving like this, there is hardly any sag in this cable chain. So really, really good for that one. Uh, let's see. I have no idea, Jose, how many links it'll take. I have a full chain here of 30, maybe. I have no idea. We'll find out when I get to that, but that will pretty much not be tonight. Um, I don't think that's going to happen tonight. I did lose a little bit of frames here. Sorry about that. Not sure why that's happening. But let me just double check things here real quick. Uh, should be okay. Yeah, lost a few frames there. Let me close a couple things here on the computer, just in case that's taking away before we really dive into this. Let me close Fusion as well. I told it not to save. Crap. I wanted it to save. Um, and we can close Prusa Slicer now. Don't need that open. Yep, close that one. Yep, close that one. We can simplify 3D. Okay, I think we're better off now. All right, so let's switch over to this camera here. You guys can get a little bit more of a bird's eye view of what's going on. So, I mean, again, if you guys saw my review of this machine, I really did like it. I thought it was quite an awesome little go for ANET. What they were able to accomplish with this thing was impressive. In this mod I'll be doing, I'm reusing a lot of the hardware on this. I'm also replacing uh, some of the hardware as well, just with some better components. Uh, we're going to get off the 8-bit board and things like that. So definitely we'll have a few better components here to work with. Uh, let's see, where should we start here with this? <laughs> we won't be using any end stops. We're going to have sensorless homing. Uh, we'll have a flex bed on here. So we're going to have a, a inductive uh, probe, which I believe I'll be using an easy ABL that I have laying around, which is capacitive, but it'll still do the trick. Let's get the board out. Curious, quit eating the box. Okay. So again, this teardown is pretty simple. Just need to get pretty much everything off the frame so that I can uh, start working on, on getting the frame ready. But we have to get all this, all these electronics off cabling out of the way. There we go, so we can get this out now. Hey Ryan, what's up man? How you doing? I'll also be able to save some of these bits and bobs because I'm a hoarder when it comes to 3D printers and I do save things after they're used. I am dropping quite a few frames here. <laughs> My connection keeps dipping down is what's going on. Wolfgang, what's up? Krieg, what's up? Yeah, he just, did he run out? Yeah, he's out in the hallway now. He likes to come hang out with me. Especially on live streams. I think he likes the attention. You know, his 
30 seconds of fame every day that he gets to get when he is here in the office. Get off my microphone. So we'll be also be reusing a lot of the, I mean, we're using all the motors. We'll be also be reusing all the cabling for that. Uh, I don't know if we'll be reusing the, uh, the belts or not. Uh, I do have other belts if I need to do that, but I'm not really sure on how that will go right yet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Aaron is not here yet, it looks like. I did start this a little bit later. I think it's right around dinner time for him. So he might come here in a little bit. Yes, Ryan, I did dress for the occasion. Figured why not. Not going to work. Okay, all that off. These insanely long bed wires. <laughs> I don't know why they made the bed wires on this printer so long. So much extra cable manage. Now I guess you'd rather be wires to be too long than too short, because you'd hate to have to extend them as soon as you get a printer. But they are still ridiculously long. So. I'm going to save the end stops. We're not going to be reusing end stops, but I will definitely save the brackets and the actual end stops because I could have another printer go bad or something where I would need them. And again, hoarder. Got to keep that stuff. Let's get the electronics enclosure out of the way here. There we go. There's the original. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. I meant to mute for that. There's the original A net board there, 8 bit board. Nothing really special going on there. But we're going to need all these bolts for other things. I put a link to download the chain for the Hobbit. The chain is not uh, 3D printed. This is an actual bought off Amazon for 10 bucks chain. The only thing that is 3D printed is the mount for the for the extrusion. It's just a 2020 uh, cable chain mount. It's nothing really special to it. Uh, okay, let's get this LCD screen again magnetized. So crazy. We're not going to be reusing the screen. I have a fun little screen that uh, Brandon actually turned me on to a while ago. So I picked one up and I think it'll be fun to use. Have a little bit of RGB in here. Uh, Jose, the glass bed will not be used. I will probably end up throwing it away because uh, there will no, not be glass on here. It does feel a little weird, like undoing all of my work that I spent working on this machine when I built it. It feels weird kind of taking it all apart now. Or, not there's a necessary reason. This is definitely not a necessary mod, but it is fun. This is pretty much a fun build. Okay, all the motor cables are now off. I think we'll only need to get one new one, maybe. Uh, I'm not sure if that Y1 will reach the new enclosure or not. Uh, but time will tell with that, I guess. Okay, let's go ahead and get this. I guess let's go ahead and get this. 
belt off. Which I really don't like there. <laughs> A little tensioning deal here, how they did it, but whatevs. It worked, I guess, for the time I had it. I did debate just using this metal plate again, but we are going for a lot of aesthetics with the new build, which is why this plate was 3D printed in PETG. All the new parts are printed in PETG, so they will be able to hold up well enough. And there for now, we're going to go ahead and get the power supply off. Come on. There we go. Okay. All these T-nuts are going to come in use later. And we'll set the power supply aside for now. That'll probably be one of the first things we go ahead and get strapped together is going to be the uh, the power supply. Because it's very quick and easy and it frees up some space once that is on and out of the way. Take off this old wrap. And actually, thanks to Jim Stellers, who I don't think he's in here the chat yet, but he sent me some of the fabric wrap for both the bed and the uh, little hot end here. But this has a lot on it. Let me know if you guys are seeing a lot of buffering or anything like that. I am still seeing a fair bit of frame drops. I might need to restart my computer. But if you guys are not seeing it, then so be it. But computer, mute. 